Hi guys, Matt from Howtech here, and today on Tech Tuesday, we're gonna put some heat in the motor. Well, more accurately, we're gonna discuss the how and why of heat distribution between individual cylinders and what steps you can take to maximize both engine longevity and output horsepower. So it's no secret that in a 2JZ, cylinder number six runs hotter than any other cylinder in the engine, followed by cylinder five, and then it's fairly evenly spread up the rest of the cylinders from there. But this is not just two JZs that follow this pattern. It's actually a relatively common phenomenon across all engines that the back one or two cylinders closest to the firewall run hotter than the other cylinders in the engine. But why? Now it could be because of uneven fuel delivery between the cylinders. Now there's countless internet arguments about how every injector has its own unique dead time and flow rate and how you need to match these things up to the nearest nanosecond of dead time or millimeters of flow or whatever it is. And there is some truth here. All injectors certainly do have a marginally different flow characteristic. But if this was the underlying cause of the issue here, there wouldn't be a pattern of just the rear cylinders getting hot. It'd be a totally random assignment of hot holes, not all clustered around those back cylinders. So while this is an issue, it's not the issue we're talking about here. It could be the coolant path, I guess. You know, coolant typically always enters the engine block at the front of the engine, closest to the radiator. So it stands to reason that the front of the engine would actually be cooler than the rear of the engine because the water goes that way around it. And this might also play a part in things, but you know, we find in race cars with no coolant at all in the block of the head that the rear cylinders still are the hottest. So maybe the effect of the cooling path isn't causing this in this case. Now, of course, it could also be the airflow. Maybe, maybe the cylinder head flows more air on the rear cylinders for some reason, but we actually know from our cylinder head flow bench that that's not the case. How could it be? Our ports are all cut identically on the CNC head porting machine. They all flow exactly the same, so it's probably not that. Well, well the cylinder head is only half the equation when it comes to airflow though. So if we consider for a moment that air has a mass, that is to say it weighs something. Not much, but you know, because air does have a mass, it also has inertia. And because we still think that Sir Isaac Newton's first law is true, that an object in motion will stay in motion, the fact that air has a mass means the direction of travel of air is important. But what has that got to do with our engine? Well, think about the direction of flow of air coming into your intake manifold especially on a turbocharged engine. Now, air comes hurtling out of the intercooler, it gets funneled through some nice tubular intercooler pipe, it bends gently through the engine bay, and then it gets fed straight into the front of the plenum chamber. Now, I can't help but to visualize this like one of those fully enclosed water slides at a water park. You know, the water skillfully gets directed through the twists and turns until you get to the end of the tunnel and poof, you get spat out into the pool at the end. But then what happens? Well. In the water slide example, that water keeps actually pushing you forward, doesn't it? And that's a lot like the air entering our intake plenum. Sure, some of it gets sucked off to the side down to cylinders one, two, three, and four, and so on, but more than its fair share of air actually continues on in the direction of travel that it was already going right to the back of the engine. So by virtue of Newton's first law of physics, somewhat relatively counterintuitively, more ends up being consumed by the cylinders furthest away from the throttle body, and the higher the RPM and the faster the air is moving, the more inertia it has, and therefore the problem actually gets more noticeable. Increase the boost, and now you're moving air that's more dense or it's heavier, so again, it's got more inertia. The problem gets amplified again. So much so that it's not uncommon that you've got to trim five, six, seven, maybe up to 10% more fuel into the back cylinders on a high revving, high boost drag engine just to get that rear cylinder the same temperature as the front one. Now, because not all intake designs are created equal, this phenomenon can be quite different based on your particular engine. But when you consider the physics of why some cylinders receive more air than others, we can actually start planning a strategy for improving engine durability. So if you've got an intake manifold where the throttle body is in the middle of the plenum, then it stands to reason that it's not the end couple of cylinders that get the extra air, 
and therefore get hot, it's actually the middle cylinders that get the extra air. So what can we do about this? The age old rule applies, you can't manage what you don't measure. So the first step is to know which cylinders are running hot and by how much they're running hot. The simplest and most common way of doing this is the addition of individual exhaust gas temperature sensors or EGT probes. EGTs in each cylinder give you a fairly precise and repeatable measurement of the variation of temperature between each cylinder. So armed with this information and some data logging, you can trim in extra fuel to the cylinders that are running the hottest and bring all of your EGTs into line with each other. What if you don't have any EGTs? Well, we can still be smart about it. If you've got a high revving turbo engine and the intake manifold is directing more of the air to the back cylinders or even to the middle cylinders, it doesn't really matter, just as a matter of safety, then I'd say, regardless of whether you have EGTs or not, it's wise to add four or 5% extra fuel to the cylinders that are getting the hottest or that you think will get the hottest to account for the extra air, especially under those high load, high RPM conditions. But what happens then if maybe you don't have an ECU like a Haltech and you can't do an individual cylinder trim for some reason, what do you do then? Well, you can actually still be smart about things. Next time you get your fuel injectors cleaned, have them individually flow tested as well. And when you're deciding which injector to place in each cylinder, match the injectors with the highest flow rates to the cylinder that you logically think is gonna get the most air. So if it's the 2J, they're going toward the back. If the air's coming into the middle of the engine, maybe it's three or four. So a couple of comments just to get the haters hating. You might have a perfectly matched flow match set of injectors to the nearest nanoliter. But if you don't also have an equally flow matched airflow through the intake manifold, it's really no advantage. In fact, you could probably argue that you'd be better off not having all of your injectors flowing exactly the same. But rather, you want a little bit of variance between them so that you can intentionally place the slightly higher flow rate injectors in the slightly higher airflow cylinders. Let's just be clear though, I'm not saying that you should go ahead and put a 1200cc injector in one cylinder and a 1000cc injector in the other, that's crazy. We're just talking about the variance between injectors of the same flow rate, or same rated flow rate. Well, that's all we have time for on today's Tech Tuesday. Why don't you leave some comments in below or even put some questions in there. I'd really love to take this Tech Tuesday section and actually answer the questions that you guys have. So put those questions in the comments down below and we'll select a few out and we'll answer them as the weeks go on. Well, I'm Matt from Haltech and I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.